us. Yeah, Thanks. There you go. I, I've melted down right now in my uh, my football picks, but uh, some celebrities had quite a few meltdowns this year. That's right. They uh, kept us entertained and did not disappoint in 2009. But were, what were some of the top celebrity meltdowns of the year? We are joined by human behavior expert Patrick Wanis. Nice to see you. Let's start with number five, Kanye West taking the microphone at the VMAs away from Taylor Swift. Why do you do that? Um, you know, he acts like an emotional vampire feeding off people's attention. He becomes a narcissist, then he plays the victim role because he did it in 2006 when he jumped up on stage, grabbed the microphone and said, my video should have won because I spent a million dollars on it and Pamela Anderson was in it. He still has this whole need for the world to either pity him or to tell him that he's great. In fact, he said, you all want me to be great, but you want me to say I'm great. No, we don't want you to say you're great. We just want you to do what you're meant to do, which is, you know, perform as an artist. Right, and keep your mouth shut, basically. Uh, number four on the list. Well, uh, or at least not try and take the attention away. Right, exactly. Just, you know, why take it away from Taylor Swift? She didn't do anything to deserve that. Another huge meltdown this year, John and Kate plus eight. Yeah, this is really sad because, you know, you have someone like John who's supposed to be a father, and he ends up becoming more engrossed in his own fame, fortune, and drive for power. You know, he shirks his responsibility as a father. He ends up with a younger girlfriend. And of course, you know, Kate's not completely innocent either. A lot of people criticize her for being nasty, mean, and a perfectionist. But they both forgot about their primary responsibility, which is to their children. And Courtney and Clayton, I call this the curse of the reality show. <laughs> well, Patrick, there's Almost actually every some... married couple. I don't know if you heard about this news with John Gosselin today. His apartment here in Manhattan was ransacked. He was, had items stolen from him. His clothes and shoes were all smashed, uh, slashed up. That's happening today. What about Christian Bale? Remember his tirade on the set of Terminator, Salvation? You know, it's very interesting about that because Christian comes from a theatrical background. And in theater, it was okay to shout and scream and have rants and raves. But then, you know, he apologizes for his three-minute rant where he's, you know, threatening violence and intimidating and being belittling and berating. Then when he apologizes, he says, you know what, I'm really, I can't handle this movie star thing. And that has nothing to do with what he did. It's okay to lose your temper when you're in an intense emotional scene, but don't then put down the person, threaten violence, and keep it going for three minutes. That's a sign of a deeper-seated issue with anger and rage. All right, now you're going to have to convince me on this next <laughs> one, uh, Patrick, because number two on your list is Tiger Woods. I don't know how you get a bigger meltdown than Tiger Woods this year, but you seem to have someone else who's topped that. But what happened to Tiger in case we lived under a rock these past few weeks? Okay, cheating with almost 14 women is one thing, but his father told the world that he thinks he's been sent by God and that he's the chosen one. So his father gives him like a godlike complex. And also, you know, when you're sleeping with 14 women, you're either a misogynist and you believe women are just there to be conquered, or you have a deep problem with emotional intimacy. He has two young children and a wife, and he's not giving them the attention and the energy. He's taking it away. Now, if you want to know why I didn't put him number one, because when we talk about number one, there's nothing worse than assaulting and beating a woman. And that brings us to number one, which was Chris Brown, of course. Uh, tell us what happened there. Well, you know, Chris Brown assaults his girlfriend in a car, and unfortunately, she didn't have enough self-respect to immediately stand up for herself and say, yes, he did this, and it's wrong. And it took Chris Brown a long time to admit, I am guilty, I'm responsible, and I'm accountable. You also have to look at Chris Brown's history. His stepfather was abusive to his mother, and Chris Brown always said, I hate my stepfather, and one day I'm going to kill him with a baseball bat. But what Chris Brown did was what most patterns of domestic violence do, repeat his father's, repeat his father's behavior. But unless he gets one-on-one -on -one help, he will do it again, because that's what happens with patterns of domestic violence. Patrick Wanis, live for us this morning in the one spot I think we all want to be down there in beautiful Miami. <laughs> Miami. Thanks, Patrick.